Hey y'all, Jen Hernandez, Loan with Jen. Today we are talking about how to not let divorce wreck your credit. So these are some proactive tips if you are pending divorce and wanna qualify for a potential mortgage in the future, you need to stay tuned and watch this video. We'll be right back. Hey, hey y'all, welcome back. Please, if you get value from this video, like, share, and subscribe. There's a arrow somewhere around here. We're gonna get right to it. So, you are worried about, you've got mingled credit with somebody else that you are divorcing. So, I've closed almost 4,000 loans. I've seen a lot of divorced people that have already divorced and also some that are going to do divorce. So, hopefully we can heat off some things here. Um, so the very first thing I want to define that's super important, divorce, the civil courts, when you have your divorce decree, even though that document might say that these debts, including a mortgage, belong to the ex, the creditors don't care. So if you're jointly on a credit card or jointly on a mortgage and that ex-spouse that was awarded those debts pays late, it will affect your credit and you'll be burned and chapped every time you think about it for the next seven or eight years until it falls off. So if at all possible, when you're talking with your divorce attorney, make sure that it stipulates and that you guys make sure before you sign on the dotted line that that ex-spouse can qualify for a mortgage and refinance it out of your, uh, out of, uh, your name. Try to do it before the divorce is final because once it's final, we've seen decrees that say, okay, within a year you have to refinance. Well, what if they don't do it, right? And in the meantime, what if they pay late? What if they have economic value, you know, problems? We've seen spouses pay late just because they know it'll mess up the other person. We've seen so many different things, okay? I'm not putting ideas in anybody's head, but this stuff happens. So, having that all detailed and worked out prior and make sure that that ex-spouse talks with a mortgage lender prior so that we know that uh, you know that pre-qualification is possible and your attorney knows okay so you want to get yourself off you might have been an authorized user on one of their accounts you want to get off of there if you're joint on any credit cards, you want to get off of there as well. And if you if you can't, or if it's joint and they won't take you off, close the card and then start to open up new ones. So again, I'm just speaking from experience and helping literally hundreds of divorced or pending divorced people through this process. These simple steps prior will save you so much heartache later on. So now I want to address uh, finally, I want to address mortgage. So people need a place to live. A lot of people are used to living in a house and they don't want to rent and they've got kids to take care of or whatever and you want to go to another home. So again, talk to a lender prior to divorcing if at all possible so that you can work with your attorney on how to word certain things. Uh, we can count any alimony or child support payment received as income after only six months. So it can't, it's not immediate. So six months is the time, and it's from the date of divorce. Uh, not if they if they during a separation they paid you know a stipend or paid paid support. It's not going to count as part of that six months. So that's really super important. Um, and. As long as the divorce decree states that the ex-spouse is awarded the home, we don't, we, we don't have to count that against your debt going forward, so you can qualify for a new home. But again, the ideal situation is it gets refinanced, but just in case it doesn't, and it's in both of your names still, then we will ignore it when we have the divorce decree. So we do recognize that, but I, I just, again, I wanna really hit home that we've seen credit scores destroyed from late payments from things that were commingled after the divorce, okay? Um, so qualifying for home, yes, you can do it. Again, alimony, child support, and on the return side, let's talk about expense. So child support alimony is also an expense if you're the one paying for it. And so that must be disclosed on the loan application. 
Make sure that you tell the lender uh, that we will need a full copy of the divorce decree um, for anyone that's that's been divorced to see what types of payments are obligated towards the divorce. And we need to see all pages of that as well. So we've covered a lot of information in this video. I'm just gonna really bullet point it here really quickly. So number one, preventative. Get yourself off cards, get yourself off authorized user cards, refinance mortgage into the one spouse's name who will retain the house. Number two, meet with a lender before you get divorced so that you know what you're in for, you know when you're able to buy, uh, what qualifying income can be used, and you know a timeline and the money that, that's gonna be needed in order to purchase uh, the new place. Okay, and number three is yes, you can qualify for the new home using the divorce decree stating that the home is awarded to the ex-spouse. We won't include that in your debt to income ratio. So I hope this has been a useful video. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, and we appreciate you watching and we'll talk to you soon. Legacy Mutual Mortgage is an equal housing opportunity lender. The opinions expressed here do not reflect those of Legacy Mutual Mortgage.